everybody, it's Rob here from Plymouth Music Zone. Hope you're well, hope everything's okay. Uh, it's a beautifully sunny day here. I don't know what it's like where, you're, where you are and when, when you're watching this, but have a look at this. Properly picturesque. Um, yeah, what a day. And uh, this is the second bedroom of the house. Uh, we're having work done in the garage. And they haven't worked on next door, so if you hear any sounds, uh, apologies. Um, but yes, fingers crossed. So far, everybody seems to be taking a break at the same time from making a loud noise. But yes, we'll see. And welcome to the first actual music happenings of our shared Samba project, where I want you to record and send in your Samba to me for us all to combine into a big hopefully awesome uh, piece of samba. And the first instrument we're going to look at is the shaker. Now, this is not a purpose-built shaker. Funnily enough, this is uh, a bunch of wall hangings of different uh, like picture hooks and things. Shakers are hopefully if maybe able to find something that's got a good shake to it or certainly if, if you haven't got anything you can think of it's um, a fairly friendly one to make something yourself. Uh, I've just spotted something else. Got some business cards in here, I bet these will work. Sort of, but yeah, good chance to be creative. Uh, some people say would uh, get like a Pringles can and put something noisy in it like, I don't know, popcorn kernels or something. Close the lid up, got a shaker, but I'm sure you can use your imagination and your ingenuity and come up with something. And I'm intrigued to see what everybody comes up with. I'm going to use uh, the picture hooks today. So shaker, within Samba, shaker is in a way the most important instrument because if you have a good Samba band but they have bad shaker players, the whole thing will sound bad. It's a slightly strange phenomenon, but that's genuinely what happens. And the shaker players, when, they, when they're good, they, they add so much to the feel of the samba. And they typically will, I mean, it's not gonna be possible with that, we're, we're gonna be playing to a metronome for our project, but in a, when, you've, when you've got a whole, group of humans together, like we used to in the, the before times, um, the shaker players can just actually not necessarily accelerate, just give that feeling that they're pushing the tempo a bit and they can affect the, the other players. So it's, it's a underrated instrument for sure. I think uh, certainly when I started Samba I was guilty of thinking, well, I want to play the big drums, uh, not this shaker, that's just, you know, silly. But actually the shaker is a gl glorious instrument, highly uh, I highly regard it now. Anyhow, let's get on with the actual musical part of this then. Uh, we're gonna... I can't remember if I said before that we were gonna have a hundred beats per minute on our shared samba. I, if I did say that, I'm revising it down to 80, and if I didn't say it, you can just pretend that I just said we're doing 80 beats per minute, because uh, 80, just a bit more sensible. Also, I made a discovery that may be helpful uh, to save anybody having to install a metronome app, Google has one. If you search for if you search for metronome, it just gives you a metronome right there, so it could be a really handy way for the recording. So let's listen to 80 beats per minute. What we're going to do is, each one of those pulses, we're going to put in four beats, four musical notes on our shaker, and there is a, a sort of shorthand for speaking this type of rhythm, this is, uh, we're using sort of a semi-quaver feel, which is 16th note feel, if, if that's the way you think of music, but uh, the important thing is that we're going one, E, and ah in each pulse. 
One e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a, one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. Uh, so that's like a way of speaking the note division that we want. Uh, so one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a, one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. So it might be worth just taking a bit of a tangent, a lot of tangents, uh, about the technique of playing the shaker, which is, you know, if we're talking about carnival samba, they will play uh, terrifyingly fast, which takes, um, you know, the foundation of the technique helps. If, we, if you can sort of get a really good foundation in that technique at the beginning, it makes it easier to get to progress to play at that sort of speed. Um, but that is um, not necessarily, if you don't have perfect technique this time, it shouldn't stop you from taking part, I'm hoping. But the, the technique would be to use a mix of your forearm, operating the shaker, and some kind of a bit of a wrist mixed in. Because if you just try to do arm, sort of works, but it's a bit awkward. And if you just did wrist, again, it's a bit awkward, but a combination of the two, you should get that nice, easy, relaxed feel with the, the shaker traveling in a kind of flat plane. And yeah, don't want to be holding too much tension. Tension just slows you down. Uh, so the actual notes, we've got, obviously, you can experiment with your improvised di uh, instrument, device, musical device, of course, yeah, uh, musical instrument. So in this one, for instance, um, I can get a longer note by shaking this way, kind of looser sound, or a bit of a tighter sound by doing that. And if I grip the box differently, kind of got some level of expression to use there that's worth bearing in mind when you want to find the sound that works for you. So yes, our four divisions, that we're going to have two types of note. We're going to have a strong note, which is one where you more vigorously uh, go in there for the, the sound. So perhaps there's been a longer travel before you stop. Perhaps there's a sharper stopping motion to get a uh, an accented beat. A, a strong beat. And to begin with, yeah, you want to just practice getting that strong beat out of time and in both directions because you want to be getting a strong beat away from you and a strong beat coming towards you. And then the other type of note is a soft beat. Um, we're not strictly talking about ghost notes here, but it's kind of like they, they're quite subtle. They can be quite subtle. In fact, the more the way that you balance out the difference between the loud and sound, uh, the loud and quiet sounds is is uh, an art form. So it's something to bear in mind. Uh, but yeah, we want to be thinking about the quiet sound. Perhaps it doesn't travel as far. Certainly doesn't travel as fast, or perhaps it doesn't stop quite as hard. But uh, yeah, we just want to be having a soft sound. That's the most important thing, which will contrast from your hard sound. Uh, so we're going to call them strong and weak beats. And then the sequence, we're going to play strong, weak, weak, strong, strong, weak, weak, strong, strong, weak, weak. So when we've got that pulse, the first, the, the, the one that's in time with the, the metronome, that one, there, that one. That's a strong beat. Uh, so it's strong and it's strong going away from me. And then we have two weak beats. So it's strong, uh, and if we go back to our sort of. That's a drill. So yeah, it's one E and A equates to strong, weak, weak, strong. Okay, so that's one. All those four beats 
all those four notes fit into one pulse of the metronome. And then when you loop it, you end up with, when, you, when we're playing multiple beats one after the other, you end up with those strong, weak, weak, strong, and then the start of the next bar is also strong, so you end up with two consecutive strongs. Strong, strong, weak, weak, strong, strong, weak, weak, strong, strong, weak, weak, strong, strong, weak, weak. Now I just did something that I advise people not to do, which is like uh, immediately accelerate. So starting slow is good, getting a feel, getting used to the actual strong, weak, weak, strong, strong. Go as slow as you need to go, definitely, uh, and work it up. Um, but if you, it's, it's uh, worth avoiding the habit of constantly speeding up as soon as you get it. I think uh, I just did it. It's easily uh, done, but something to avoid. So when you're, when you're working with a slower tempo, just take that metronome down. Shaking that down to 50. So sl staying consistent at a slower tempo should help you be able to sort of keep more accurate time than um, sort of starting to accelerate as soon as you get something. So yeah, uh, that's 50 and what we want to be aiming for is 80. Daka chicka daka chicka daka chicka daka chicka one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a strong weak weak strong strong weak weak strong strong weak weak strong that was a mouthful. So just take it at your pace, um, take your time, get it comfortable, get, make sure you can um, sort of becomes, make it become a, something your body knows how to do so you don't have to think, oh it's strong this time and then it's weak, it's just something that becomes a kind of natural, something that feels natural to do. Uh, if it's too much doing the one and uh, please feel free to send in just the one. So we're going along, could just go, And a and a uh, so, because that would be a great addition to, um, don't worry about getting the one yanders if it's too much. But uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to hearing what you send in. We've got that other video about how to record and submit your sambas to us. And give me a good stretch of time, please, uh, like at least a minute um, of you playing in time. And we'll be able to start putting our big samba together. I'm really looking forward to hearing uh, what we come up with. But yeah, good luck, and we'll look at a different instrument next week. Okay, take care. Bye.